Welcome to track number two of the message of sacrifice. All right. So, I am going to share with you about sacrifice in the church. Now, one of the strong attacks in Pergamos is, all right, one of the strong deceptions. Okay, and I'm, I think I better give you these seven deceptions. Seven deceptions of Pergamos, and then we get into the sacrifice. Number one, that it is better, okay, and what I'm, what I'm sharing with you is a lie. This thing that I'm telling you is not true. It's a lie, okay. It is better to work for earthly achievements rather than to work for heavenly rewards. Is it hot? It's getting hot, isn't it? Because I'm beginning to struggle. Are you there or you've gone home? Yeah. No. Are you there? Yeah. When you live here, you will be under a strong impression that it's better to work for earthly achievements rather than heavenly rewards. Is it true? How many think that is true? Yeah, but it's not true. It's a lie. It's a blackout lie. It's a lie from the devil. You know, just turn off this and let us freeze, then you warm us up again. Okay? Are you there? Okay? So, it is more important to work for earthly. And that is why, if somebody was offered the opportunity to work for an, a heavenly reward and put aside his earthly achievements, people would rebel again. Not only the person, but people around would not like it. His family would not like it. His friends would make comments. They would fight against it. If I, if I called you and I said, God wants you to work for him full time. Look, you would, first of all, maybe pretend that you are in agreement. But then your spouse is not so happy about it. You get what I'm saying? And then also your mother, whom you are looking after. And your father, who took you to school. And your relatives. And your auntie. And your friends. And some comments that people will make will keep you away from doing that. Brothers, I'm a pastor. It's my work. What I'm telling you, I'm just telling you things that I'm bringing from my treasures old and new. <laughs> Are you listening to me? I'm saying, I'm giving you the deceptions of Pergamos which apply to us. I may not give you all, but I just want to give you one of these because I'm saying I'm going to share with you some things that are very important. And one is that many people feel that it is better to work for heavenly, earthly achievements, degrees, qualifications, money, houses, prestige, name it, than to work for God. So Rachel, if I was to come on this trip to Maryland, call your husband aside and say to him, husband, I feel that you should give yourself up for the work of God from July or August. You get it? We may have a serious family meeting. Because Pastor Michael is a successful physician. You get it? He works in a nice hospital. And an American doctor is different from an Ethiopian doctor. <laughs> is that not so? No, is what I'm saying true or is it not true? Now, but you and I, you and I know the word of God, and you and I know that it's a matter of time we are going to go to heaven and we are going to see in heaven all these things, whether they are true or not. But if I come to him now and suggest to him, you know, that he should relinquish his career and his job and work for Jesus today. What's happening there? It's too cold now. 
Just turn it off. So we be in the natural. When we breathe out, we are just warming the environment. Is that not so? Three things that come out when you breathe. Carbon dioxide, water vapor, some heat. Oh. Huh. What, what is it? Biology? Oh. This is biology. Good. It's good to go to school. Now, are you there? So, I am saying that this is a strong deception. Now, somebody may say, Oh, but this is, this is not the devil. If we see the devil, we will know him. He's the madman of Gadara. Let me tell you something. A very subtle influence on the European church has brought it today to a non-existent church. Our church in England, London, we are trying hard to buy a church building in, uh, in London. It's costing a lot of money. But we are really, really working on it to try and get that building and buy it. It's an old Anglican building. Are you, as you pass by, I passed by a church building the other day. That church building has been converted into apartments. I passed by a building in, in, in Zurich, in Switzerland, a place which had a lot of Christians. The man said, and that church built hundreds of years ago, it seats about 1,500 people. They said only 15 people come to church, and they are all old ladies. And they are so few and they have to help them to climb the stairs. They can't even climb the stairs to come up. And they have decided to start having services every two weeks. Instead, you know what? Don't let the children disturb you, okay? Because without the children, we will be laying hands to pray for pregnancy. You get what I'm saying? So let us flow with that. It's difficult for me even to preach. But try to let's concentrate. Amen? Otherwise, we have to be praying for pregnancies and other things all the time you get it so now god has given it to us so we have to manage with it amen if it's too much then you take it out for some fresh air the coldness will make the child sleep then you come back <laughs> okay so try to we are concentrating it's not easy but we can do it amen. amen i can do all things through christ who strengthens me yvonne stand up please what verse is that philippians pardon Every Christian, I am giving you sword drill as we go along. I just call you to stand up, okay? If you are a Christian, you must know. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Check, 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 check. 13, they are saying it for you. Okay, so get you filled your first one. Amen. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? I'm saying that can... Can something slight, something so apparently not powerful like this, destroy a church? Oh, please. Just these ideas that there's no God. Life is on earth. The reward is on earth. There's nothing. Heaven is what you make it. Life is what you make it. Life is what you Let us eat and drink. Tomorrow we die. Heaven is what you make it on earth. And so on. That has has, has removed a church from the surface of the earth. Only that. That's why I say that when the devil is attacking it, it's here to your mind, it's here to your heart, and it's there to chop off your feet so that you stop moving. So there are churches which have the right way of thinking. They are not affected in their heart, but their feet are cut off, so they don't move anymore. They don't do outreach. They don't move in the right direction. There are churches that are moving the right direction, they have the right mind, but they are full of hurt, bitterness, condemnation, depression, hatred, bitterness, different. So, you see, the attacks are different depending on who you are and what you are doing, where the thing can work on you. You get what I'm saying? And I'm saying something because I am the pastor of this church, and I know where and I can see where the devil is coming from. And that's why I said this thing that I'm go- about to preach. I myself, I don't like what I'm about to say. Do you understand? Because I'm going to preach about this till I leave on Sunday. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to preach about sacrificing to God until I leave. And I'm telling you that I am not going to use my wisdom to teach you, but what is in the Word of God. 
And I'm saying that it's a strong deception. It's a strong deception that it's better to work for earthly things. It's a strong attack on the church. Strong. And because our church has a lot of professionals, and a lot of people, we have preached prosperity, people are working, people are getting jobs, we are praying for people to get visas, to get green cards, to get jobs, to get promotion, to finish school, to pass their exams, and we believe in education, and so on. A strong attack is also against us there. That it is not necessary to sacrifice any such thing. We can do it without sacrificing. That's another deception. Write it down. That it's not necessary to sacrifice anything. We can do the work of God without sacrificing anything. Amen. Amen. Now, why do, I, why do we say that? We can do the work without sacrificing. There are people who are doing the work. This is Lady Pastor Louisa. She's a nice doctor. She's doing the work of God. She's pastoring a church. Which church are you pastoring? <laughs> Pardon? Columbia. Pardon? Columbia. Can you hear her? The Columbia branch. Columbia. She passed a church in Columbia. And she's, she's a nice doctor. You get what I'm saying? She's not sacrificed her husband. Have you been sacrificed? Bishop. No, Bishop. He has not been sacrificed. Do you have children? Yes. So she's not like a nun. She's not have to sacrifice having children. She's not have to sacrifice having a husband. That's the husband. Where are your babies? Oh, they are all at home. Okay. So she has, she has husband. She has baby. School. Did you finish school? Yes. She's finished school. How about your profession? Do you have a profession? Yes. Are you working with your profession? Yes. Good. So she has everything that you would want to have in life. So she's okay. She's okay. And she, so she's also doing the work of God. So gradually, there's a strong deception that you can do it anyway without sacrificing anything from God, for God. But ladies and gentlemen, I came to share with you in Maryland that sacrificing to God is a very major part of Christianity. And except you and I rise up to begin to sacrifice to God what He asks us to sacrifice to God, we are going nowhere. We are, we are ending our Christian work right where it is. Let me just begin to share with you about sacrifice. Number one. Now when, when we talk about sacrifice, what does God expect us to sacrifice? Or what are the things we can sacrifice? Let us ask yourself, what is a sacrifice? Sacrifice is something that costs you. Amen. I said a sacrifice is something that costs you. A sacrifice is something that costs you and pains you and hurts you. Amen. And... If we are going to bring the glory, you see, when David was carrying the ark from Obedidom's house to Jerusalem, the Bible said every three paces he sacrificed. And if you calculate the distance from Obedidom's house to Jerusalem, every three steps sacrificed, that shows you the cost of bringing the glory and bringing the grace of God to where it belongs involves sacrificing all the way to that place. There is no way you are going to bring the ark from Obedidom's house to the house of God unless they sacrifice every step of the way. Amen. What are the things that God calls upon us to sacrifice? God is going to call upon you to sacrifice your money. And that's going to be a strong one because that's why we are here. That's the other God that is holding us. God, almighty God's rival on earth is not Satan. It's money. That's why Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon. He didn't say you cannot serve God and Satan. He was very direct. He said you cannot serve God and mammon. The thing that is challenging God for you, for your life, is not Satan, but money. Amen. Money. First and best. Offering. Many people here don't pay first and best. 
Many here don't pay 10% of what God gives you. you if you were to pay 10% of what, give, what God gave you, we will never do fundraising in the church. Most people don't pay. We will never, we will never do fundraising. Ah! Our first and best alone will carry us into the future. Most people don't give sacrificially. God will call you to sacrifice your time. To be where God is. It takes time to be here. Amen? Amen? God will call on you, Michael, to sacrifice your life. Your career. God can ask for anything. So just name anything you have or you are. He can ask. So just write down the list. You you yourself can. I don't need to tell you this. You can tell me the things that are important to you. God can ask you to sacrifice your clothes. Could you do that also? Yeah. Maybe all the nice suits that you have since you came to New York. <laughs> all the nice clothes that you have. All the nice shoes that you have. God can cause, ask you to put them down. He can ask you to sacrifice your jewelry. He can ask you to sacrifice your clothes. He can ask you to sacrifice your food. He can ask you to sacrifice your future, your sleep. And so here we have the church. Not prepared to be awake late. Not prepared to get up early. You call for dumb prayer meeting in Silver Springs. That the prayer meeting is from 5 to 7. Our church in Kumasi, they are having 100 days prayer meeting. 100 days prayer meeting. 5 a.m. every day for 100 days. 100 days prayer meeting from January to January, February, March, April. It's ending somewhere in April, the 100 days. Every day, even I called Pastor Kaka from Kumasi, come to Accra for a meeting. He was saying that because of the 100 days, he, he doesn't want to miss. I said, my brother, come. Let the people have the prayer meeting. And so he came. Are you listening to me? If you like, let's go 100 days prayer meeting in Silver Spring, Maryland. 10 days. Your pastor is saying we should reduce to 10. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, what are you talking about? It sounds so strange. So don't you know that we work? Here we work. And in Ghana we play. We, we are playing. That's why, that's why I've come here. Because I don't have anything to do. <laughs> We are playing. That is why I have come. Because I have nothing to say and to do. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? And so I'm saying that the fact that it sounds strange shows that there is something wrong. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. We are called upon to sacrifice our, our, our future, our career, our best days. Many people want to sacrifice when they are older. But yesterday, I learned something. I won't share that with you. I should share with you. Okay, remind me to share with you. Amen. Amen. I say, we are, ex- we, we, we are holding back what we need to give to God. And now things sound so odd. When you say something, go to Africa. If I send you now, I want you to go to Rwanda. I was telling my church, I said, right now, let me call people and send them to, I said, I'm calling you, sending you to Rwanda. How many people want to go? Nobody will raise their hand. So, okay, I want to send you to uh, California. Ah, Lord, the Lord has spoken. I feel God moving now. I feel the presence of the Spirit. There's an anointing here falling over me. Hachimatsu, sending me to California. Your eyes. Are you listening to me? As soon as the sacrifice thing comes in, that is why much of our lives and our fruitfulness dies at a certain age. 
people don't sing for God anymore. You see, because to have a good choir, to make albums, to make CDs, to make music, you need to sacrifice a lot of time to even make a film. You know, to make a film, you know what they do. Man, you don't have an idea. To do anything nice and beautiful, it involves so much. You don't have an idea. For me to be here, you don't ha- have an idea what it takes for me to be here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There is a sacrifice. There is a price. There is a- God will cause you to sacrifice your children. Ah, my children. My children, my children. My children, my children. Our children, your children. God will also cause you to ask you to sacrifice your children. Does it mean you should go and kill them? No. That's not what it means. But you may have to sacrifice them. I mean, one pastor was going to church and so on. His children said, Daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. And, and he said to his children, I got to go. I got to go. And his children said, Daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. And he said, I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> when I say, Daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. You say, I got to go. I got to go. Daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. <laughs> I got to go. I got to go. Look, as your children go, they will tell you don't go to church. Daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. I got to go. I got to go. When I was coming, my, my children, my, my, my son said, are you traveling again? Are you traveling again? You just went and you've come back. I don't want you to go. My children don't want me to go. I gotta go. I gotta go. (laughs) There are many mothers who are no more in the ministry, are no more working for God, serving God because of their children. But they. I remember a, a lady in our church, she had a child. Suddenly, just as she gave birth, as the baby came out of her, she had a wild job. And I said, she had a good job. She didn't have a job before. Then as the baby came out, she had a job. Do you understand what I'm saying? I was just watching to see what was going to happen. Brother, I think two weeks or three weeks, after she delivered, she was at a new job. Yes, sir, Master, I have come here. I am ready. She was there at the door, ready to work. So she started working. And she's worked there for years because it was a very good job. When people really need to, they pay the price. Amen. Amen. So you'll be called upon to sacrifice your time, your tiredness, your sleep, everything. You've got to do it. I said, you've got to do it. You gotta go. You gotta go. (laughs) Amen. Are you listening to me? Now, this is a strong deception that comes to us as we um, live in this part of the world. And as we continue as lay pastors. Pastor Joel, are you with me? That we can do okay without sacrificing we're well, okay after all i come to church i preach god moves people give their life to jesus if i was a full-time pastor what would i do on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday from morning to evening what is there to do nothing much amen christians Assume that the church would always be there. They think that, oh, after the church, it is there. It will be there. But I tell you, a lot goes into the church being where it is today. This church is here. Because I came here. Where is Judith? Where is Judith? Met with Judith and a few others. Some of who are not here now. Pastor Joel was coming here every Sunday. He was driving. Because the drove drives with his thumb like that. 
he learned how to drive with his thumb out of coming to Maryland. <laughs> because when he's tired and he put his hand like that. He's driving. I said, Pastor Joe, are you awake? Are you awake? And he kept coming. One day he met a pastor who said, What are you doing? Come to Maryland every Sunday from New York. Are you crazy? Yeah. But today you are sitting here. And there's a church here because somebody paid a price. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we've got to sacrifice. We've got to go. We've got to go. Amen. So now I just want to share with you from the Bible, all right, about sacrificing to the Lord. Amen. Number one, I'm going to give you many points. I, 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 I want you to just take note of these. We are going to go through the Bible. Amen. Number one. Sacrifices are stopped, comma, taken away, comma, opposed by the Antichrist or anyone like the Antichrist. Should I say that again? I'll say it again. Sacrifices are taken away or are stopped, comma, Taken away, comma, and what? Opposed by who? The Antichrist or anyone like him. How many want to be like the Antichrist? Turn with me to Daniel chapter, chapter what? Eight. Are you there? Are you still around? Chapter 8, are you there? Let's look at verse 7. Now, now look at me everyone. This is talking about the Antichrist. Okay? Notice. And I saw him come close to the ram. This is a sort of pictorial description of the Antichrist. And he was moving with color against him and smote the ram and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand therefore the he goat waxed very great and when he was very strong the great horn was broken and for it came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven now this speaks of Alexander the Great when he died his four generals took over his uh, work all right and He's described as a goat because he was very fast and rapid in his conquest. And his uh, military uh, victories were very rapid, one after the other. He moved very fast from place to place. Then he died. Now verse 9 speaks about the continuation of this man into the Antichrist, one of the uh, goats, one of the horns. It says, And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land and it was great even to the host of heaven now this speaks of probably of believers and it cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them verse 11 yea he magnified himself even to the prince of the host who is the prince of the host Probably speaking about Jesus, because you see before, he talks about the host of heaven. In verse 11, the host is the host of heaven. Alright, and in verse 11 it says, Yea, he magnified himself, even to magnify himself to the host of heaven. Are you there? Let me just check. Uh, I want to, 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 to. Yeah, okay. My, my Bible says in the margin, he magnified himself against the host of heaven or against Christ or God or whoever. Alright? And by him, the daily what? Sacrifice was taken away. And the place of his sanctuary 
was cast down. And an host was given him against, against what? The daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking. And another saint said unto that certain saint who speak. How long shall the vision be concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden under foot and he said unto me unto two thousand and three hundred days amen two thousand and three hundred days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed hallelujah now ladies and gentlemen are you are you are you with me are you with me two thousand and what three hundred days how many years is that how many days in a year three is five times seven is how much two thousand and something anyway well Notice that the entrance of the Antichrist, okay, if this is the Antichrist, but if it is not the Antichrist, a very bad person, is marked by something which keeps repeating itself, that he stops the sacrifices that are made to God. He stops it. He's against it. He prevents it. Look, this thing is, when God showed it to me in London, because I was in London and the Lord spoke to me, preach about sacrifice. And I said, wow, what is in sacrifice? I don't know anything about sacrifice. And that was in the afternoon, I had to preach in the evening. And suddenly the Lord showed me all these things and I was amazed. And when I realized that it is the anti-God, 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 anti-Christ, that prevents and stops people from making sacrifices to God. I said, man, I know where this thing is coming from. And suddenly I became confident. And I realized, because you see, even as a bishop of a church, and sometimes like a father to many people, sometimes I have to say to one, go. And to another one, do this. And many people will do what I, I, I would tell them to do. And sometimes it's very difficult. You see, if you are a general in an army and you are sending people, you know that some of them are going to die. It's just not easy. When Elijah, when Elijah called Elijah and threw his mantle on him, Elijah came and asked, can I please sacrifice my oxen and go and say bye-bye to my father? He said, go and do it. What have I done to you? He said, what bad? I mean, he felt so bad about having called Elijah. You understand what I'm saying? He said, what have I done to you? Go on and say bye-bye to the people. What have I done to you? I know what I have called you to come in to do. Are you listening to me? And I realize that it is against God, against God, against God, against God. Anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-Christ is anti-sacrifice. Look at me. I've sacrificed my reputation, my future, the best years of my life. You see, I'm getting to the point, I'm, I'm almost 50 now. At the point, people will no longer be ready to employ me. Because after, after above, above I said, there are many jobs they ask for your age. Why do you think they ask for date of birth? At a certain point, your gray self can no longer function the way they were functioning before. You can't learn like the way you learned before. You cannot grasp things. You cannot bend. You cannot flow. You are not as bendable and as flexible as others are. So they ask, and there are certain jobs above the age of 30, they are not prepared to employ you. It's very, very real. It's not so easy to learn new things and to bend and to be flexible and to flow. I've given the best of my years and of my life. My best years are going by. The strength of my life, this is it. My future, my career as a doctor. Brother and sister, I had plans to come to America and I made plans. In fact, even before I finished school, I prepared various documents. See, there are some things that I don't know which say. I prepared various documentation. I've done certain moves to make sure that when I finish school, I'm moving. I was finishing school in, in, uh, in March. I finished school on the 10th of March. 
medical school, 10th of March. And before the 10th of March, I had made various, I knew who I was going to marry. I had made arrangements of how I was going to move with her. I did, I had made various moves. Before I finished school, I was getting ready to leave. I've sacrificed my reputation amongst the people in the world. People see me sometimes as a thief. So, there's a pastor. What are pastors? Pastors are, pastors are you see, the high ranking jobs with good reputation. The highest job with a good reputation is our Supreme Court judges. And then after that, doctors. Right? And amongst the lowest, you get it, are politicians. <laughs> and then also, uh, along the very low rank, are some of the charismatic pastors and the new pastors and, and so on that are around. They have a very low ranking and rating. And so I have left the high up there to come down, you get it, and people see me. My, my, my son went to school the other day. And one child said, your father is a thief. And my, my son came to uh, ask my wife whether daddy was a thief. Because somebody in the school said that I was a thief. You understand what I'm saying? That is a, a child. And who was this child? The child, the son of a politician. And I said to myself, who is the thief? <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying? And all these things have been set aside so that we can... Now, the step into that great breakthrough of Lighthouse Chapel International. How many believe that Lighthouse is a, an important church that has come to exist, that is doing something important? Yeah. But the step to that was to make a sacrifice of my life. Now, in other words, to stop that church from coming into existence... All I have to do is to stop the sacrifice. And so that is why the Antichrist is anti-church. And Antichrist is anti-sacrifice. And that is why now I am confident when I am sending people to sacrifice their lives. Now I don't have that because I know what is against it and who is against it. The next thing that I want, the second point that I want you to note is that Satan is directly opposed opposed to sacrifice Satan is directly are you there? opposed against the idea of sacrifice he is against the concept of sacrifice. Hallelujah. Directly and personally. Amen. So if anybody here is against sacrifice, then you are on the Antichrist side and you are on Satan's side. Your friends are some way. Turn with me to Matthew chapter... Now, are you there? Notice verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and of chief priests and scribes and be killed. Is it? Something nice? Huh? He began to show what? He began to show what? Unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer things of the elders. And what else? And chief priests and scribes and be killed. He must. Did he say he, he may? He must. He must. You must sacrifice. You must sacrifice, otherwise you will never prosper. You see, before you can be blessed to a certain level, my brother, you're going to have to sacrifice. I was telling my, the church in London that 
I sense that they need to break certain barriers. Because maybe you, you can live abroad for a long time, but you never get to a certain level. How many have noticed that you work, you pay back rent, mortgage? Many people who have so called bought houses, I, I, I say personally, I'm against mortgages. I'm against all those things because I have not yet seen people succeeding in it. I, I, tell, I own a house. I, this is my house. It's not your house. It is a contract you have made to work for somebody for 25 years. And you don't know whether you will be sick or whether you will die or your husband will lose his job or your wife will lose her job or whether this will happen or the job will close down or there will be a recession or the, this or that. That is not a house. Please. It's a contract. It's a business. It's a risk. It's a step. It's, it's something. But it's not a house. A house is something you own and you don't owe anybody. Whether it rains or it shines, whether the recession or dis- dis- discretion or obsession, you are still in your house. Nobody can move you. That is when you've bought a house. So don't tell me you've bought a house. Tell me you've, you've entered some business deals. That, that's what you should tell me. That's what you should tell me. Tell me you have some, you've entered in some business deals. But not that you have bought a house. That is not a house. You've entered some business. If you enter some business, then what we have to do is to pray for you that your business will succeed. Yeah, but not to even dedicate the house because it's not a house. We can pray in the house, but it's not your house. <laughs> yeah. Are you listening to me? How did I get into this? I was telling my people that they need to be released into a certain level. 